Thank you very much. First of all, I should mention that I am not uh, representing uh, any institution, and uh, this is my own opinion here. Um, to begin with, uh, we have to find a definition for hybrid warfare. I appreciate what was mentioned here, uh, trying to define the term, but it is rather a new term if we consider it from the perspective of a new military doctrine. Uh, so this has entered uh, recently in strategic jargons, and we have to examine different aspects of this military doctrine. Uh, hybrid, whenever you mention it, first of all comes to mind hybrid cars, or, or it seems a, to be a very chic uh, term, but unfortunately they are using it for military purposes these days. Um, from old ages to present time, uh, strategies have been devised to defeat the enemies and to win the war. Sun Tzu, the Chinese strategist, authored the art of war more than 2,000 years ago. The infamous nuclear doctrine of the Cold War era, dubbed as MAD, Mutual Assured Destruction, that unfortunately still has some advocates, is a matter of world concern. Another famous military doctrine from that era was a strategic defense initiative, SDI, or Star War, in the US under the Reagan administration. It is argued that perhaps the major achievement of Star War was dragging the Soviets into an expensive and unaffordable arms race that finally led to the demise of the Soviet Union and end of the Cold War. Anyhow, the world after one and a half decade into the 21st century is faced with increasing challenges to its security, both in the forms of traditional and new threats. In the classical definition, the security was limited to the sphere of military and defense forces. In today's world, security transcends the sole traditional military aspect and is focused more on variety of subjects like climate change and global warming, industrial pollution, etc. In the evolution of military doctrines, new innovations may introduce substantial changes in the military security doctrines. Cybernetic warfare, space-based systems, and futuristic weapons with an artificial intelligence are some examples. Currently, remote-controlled weapons such as Precision-guided munitions and drones play an important part in contemporary military operations, although they are extremely um, controversial on moral grounds. And now we have to deal with hybrid war. Many experts are confused about the so-called hybrid warfare. They argue that any hostile engagement can be called hybrid as long as it is not limited to a single form and dimension of warfare. It is therefore not surprising that most of the wars in the history of mankind have been fought by using asymmetries that exploit opponent's weaknesses and deploys combination of regular, irregular, and conventional, unconventional available forces. And in fact, the new interest to explore the 
scope and application of hybrid warfare became uh, acute after Russia intervened in Ukraine and annexed Crimea and following events in the eastern provinces of Ukraine. Hence, it is suggested that the deteriorating state of uh, relations between Russia and the West has to be the focal point in any study regarding the hybrid warfare at present time. Americans who were stunned by the tactics employed by Russia to annex Crimea and its role in the eastern Ukraine designated the combination of stealth operation, mobilization of local proxy forces, and international propaganda as hybrid warfare. Although NATO has changed Russia, uh, although NATO has uh, charged Russia that it was carrying out hybrid warfare in the conflict in Ukraine, yet there seems to be no agreed definition of the terms related to hybrid warfare in the NATO, at least in official terms. Meanwhile, NATO is apparently concerned about its deterrent uh, posture towards Russia, and it is considering adoption of a robust response toward hybrid war in, other, in order to demonstrate to Russia that limited war is not possible. Since as early as 2014, Russia and the United States entered a period of confrontation and general perception in the West was that this, was, this new Russian-American confrontation will last a long time. In his pronouncement of the US national military strategy in 2015, the U.S. Chairman of the Joint Chief of Staff, General Martin Dempsey, while referring to Russia's actions in Ukraine, said hybrid conflicts will persist well into the future. These developments have led many experts to believe that the world is on the threshold of a new Cold War. With suspicion about the intentions of the West in Ukraine, Kremlin's major fear was that Ukraine would turn into an anti-Russia uh, state with membership in NATO. Russian President Vladimir Putin in June 2015, during St. Petersburg International Economic Forum, clearly spelled out that US foreign policy decisions are dragging the world into a new Cold War. Later that same month, Putin announced that Russia will field 40 new intercontinental ballistic missiles in 2015. Russia's move was an ostensible response to the NATO countries move to strengthen their conventional military forces by deploying heavy weapon equipment in Eastern European member states. Russia knowing that it lacks the upper hand in conventional military strength was perhaps responding by relying more heavily on its own nuclear deterrent forces. These developments seemingly changed the perception in the West about Russia. Thus, Russian behavior was considered to be part of a behavior and more dangerous confrontation with the West. Hence, it was argued that a quarter century after the collapse of the Soviet Union, the West faces a greater threat from the East than at any point during the Cold War and hybrid warfare is a tool that Russia is using to change the existing world order. With heightening of tensions, a number of top think tanks and scholars in the United States 
are calling for the development of new nuclear weapons that are more flexible and usable. Following that, in September 2015, it was announced that the U.S. plans to modernize 20 nuclear weapons stationed at a German airbase. Another major strategic issue is NATO's ballistic missile defense plans in Central Europe that have long been one of the most contentious issues between Moscow and Washington. The European Phased Adaptive Approach, EPAA, or Missile Defense Shield, involves replacing interceptor bases in Romania and Poland that are capable of shooting down various ranged ballistic missiles. When the U.S. decided to install the new system, it claimed that it was aimed against Iran and North Korea ballistic missiles. After Iran's nuclear deal with six world powers, the Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said that the deal obviates the need for NATO's ballistic missile defense plans in Central Europe. Lavrov noted that while the deal with Iran was going to be implemented, quote, the stated reason for the construction of the defense shield will no longer apply, unquote. American officials were quick to respond by saying that the EPAA, missile defense system, is necessary to protect the U.S. and its allies from the threat posed by ballistic missiles from the Middle East. And the agreement with Iran only addresses the issue of nuclear weapons and not Iran's ballistic missiles. Amidst these squabbles, the Munich Security Report of 2015 sounded an alarm when it said that, quote, before 2014, the notion of hybrid warfare was a topic for military experts and a strategist. The Ukraine crisis changed that. War has come back to Europe, albeit in a new shape, unquote. In the prevailing atmosphere of tension and fear of a new Cold War, Washington became more keen to reassure the Central European states that they are not being abandoned as a result of the Iran nuclear deal. For instance, in a visit to Poland, the U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry asserted that the deployment of EPAA would not be contingent on the Iran nuclear agreement. Nevertheless, by missing Iran pretext after the nuclear deal, it is becoming increasingly difficult for the United States to justify the development of its ballistic missile defense strategy. However, the crisis in Ukraine and Russia's hybrid warfare might present a fresh justification for that policy. Another hot spot identified for uh, hybrid warfare is the South China Sea. Since 2011, Russia and China have conducted regular joint military exercises, rising uh, the suspicion in the West about a new military alignment between Russia and China. Territorial disputes in the South China Sea involve both island and maritime claims. The area seems to be rich in mineral resources. Some have compared com prominence of the South China Sea in the energy field with the Persian Gulf that has proven crude oil reserves of 101 billion tons. It is estimated that the South China Sea 
contains about 17.7 billion tons of crude oil. It is therefore not surprising that in China, they have nicknamed the South China Sea as the second Persian Sea. In the unilateral power constellation that emerged after the end of the Cold War, the United Nations system of collective security has increasingly become dysfunctional. During this period, Europe and Asia are going through a transitional phase and relations between America and its European and Asian allies on the one hand and Russia and China on the other hand is showing signs of increased tension especially in the aftermath of Ukraine and South China Sea episodes. Unfortunately, the Cold War mentality mostly prevails among major powers. The irony is that NATO as a Cold War era alliance has not only not been disbanded, but instead has expanded. Despite these negative signs, recent nuclear agreement reached in Vienna on July 2015 between Iran and six world powers provides some basis for optimism in the global diplomatic arena. The Iran nuclear deal demonstrated the possibility of resolving complicated international problems through negotiations based on mutual respect. The experience accumulated through these negotiations could be used creatively and energetically for engaging to solve other chronic international disputes. The issue that needs more attention is nuclear disarmament. Although the agreement with Iran is a landmark in the history of arms control, but the stark reality is that nine states still hold close to 16,000 nuclear weapons in underground silos, submarines, and airplanes ready to be launched. They have repeatedly stated that their willingness to use these weapons in the circumstances they believe necessary to protect their security. Indeed, the nuclear arms race and militaristic approaches to global security is the major threat to world peace. To stop this dangerous uh, trend, the role of civil society should be re-emphasized and enhanced. The role is especially important in public awareness and peace education by utilizing available advanced information technology. Thank you very much.